I'm here with G-Rex's 80 carry Stitch. Congratulations on the win. Now, you surprised us with the Callista Alistair combo, considering that you've only played her once this entire split. So what really brought out that combination here today? 그 스티치 선수 우선 승리를 축하드리고요. 이번 경기에서 칼리스타 알리스타 조합을 꺼내셨는데 아무래도 이번 정규 시즌도 한 번밖에 사용하지 않아서 많은 사람들이 놀랐을 것 같아요. 이 칼리스타 알리스타 조합을 사용해야 된 계기가 어떤 게 있는지 말씀해 주세요. 어, 우선 뱀픽 과정에서 원거리 딜러 챔피언이 너무 많이 밴되기도 했고 그리고 워낙 칼리스타 같은 경우에는 메타에 잘안 맞아도 항상 제가 자신 있어 하는 챔피언 중에 하나이기 때문에 고르는 것 같고요. 어, 실제로 최근 스크림에서도 솔랭에서도 한 번도 사용하지 않았기 때문에 상대 팀도 예측 불허했던 픽이 아닌가 싶어요. 그냥 자신감의 표현입니다. So uh, first of all, a uh, lot of ADCs were banned during the pick and ban phase, and even though Kalista isn't too much of a hot pick, um, I'm always always confident to play that champion. And even though uh, we didn't actually practice Kalista during the recent scrims or solo solo queue, uh, I think this is kind of a trying to convey my confidence through Kalista. And unfortunately, on your way to road, on your way to Worlds, you had to leave behind two of your core teammates, Wuji and Reyes, to make the six-man roster. So, how did you really adapt to these changes as a team? 이 롤드컵에 오면서 이제 정규 시즌 때 같이 경기를 진행했던 그 우지 선수랑 레이즈 선수를 이제 같이 못 오게 했잖아요. 그래서 이번 때 유인 로스터에 참여를 하면서 어떻게 이 변화에 적응하실 수 있는지 말씀해 주세요. 어 저희가 우선 캔디가 라인전을 잘하기도 하고. 어 그래서 그걸 위주로 지금 포커스를 두고 있고요. 음 그리고 아마 탑은 여전히 안정감 있고 캐리력도 있기 때문에 미드를 좀더 시팅을 잘해주는 쪽으로 하는 것 같아요. 네, 그러면. Uh, so with our current roster, Candy has a very strong lane phase, and also our top, he's a very stable and very. Uh, very reliable top laner. So I think even with the current roster, we can still find a way to optimize and strengthen our team uh, roster. Stitch, thank you, and I wish you the best of luck in your upcoming games. Thank you very much, Avali. Yes, Stitch, you're being pretty confident. He said, well, uh, we had to adapt, so I adapted, and I played a champion that I had in practice, and it worked out. I remember 2015 LPL. He plays that champion. It's there his go-to there, and he has the opportunity, and he got it today. Yes, and a win for G-Rex on the board, and that brings us to our next match. Back to Group C, Game 3, where Kaboom takes on Japan's detonation, Focus Me. Now, of course, as a reminder, if you missed it, Kaboom played earlier today versus Cloud9. Takeaways there, uh, mainly C9 won, but what was kind of what we want to see improved of from Kaboom? That was not a good sentence. What do we want to see out of Kaboom, Mark? I want to see more out of Ranger. I thought <laughs> there we go. had a pretty comprehensive game plan for the yeah. most part about side lane pressure and an Olaf trying to snowball those, and then he completely failed at doing anything like that, and that was a, a big problem for them. They did get some landing advantages. They did find some pickoffs later with good vision control, mm -hmm. but you just need a better early game out of him. Yeah, yeah, better early game, and a lot of the times you can get that focus if your mid lane's ahead or at least has a better option and there was no option with no teleport there from the victor okay so we need to see a stronger early game out of kaboom they need to win their next game and they're going up against the representatives from the ljl detonation focus me within the top lane evie then steel in the jungle which i think is a super good name for a jungler by the way uh Saros, the legend in the mid lane utapon on 80 carry and vivid on support now when it comes to the history of this team they are the most long-standing organization coming out of the LGL. Yeah, long standing, consistent, you can hit them all with it. When it comes down to the best of five that is in the playoffs, they haven't been hitting it all too well. Last four opportunities to be able to make it to Worlds or an international performance, they flopped. Now they get their chance, which is wonderful. And I think that Steel, I know you clung on to that one, yeah. cool name. They actually play through a lot of his jungle wing. I think in the LGL, it's a lot of jungle focus. So play through him slowly. He can go for invades a little bit more consistently with their a push there from Ciros. That's what I'm looking towards. Okay, uh, Evi is also a name that we recognize. As you mentioned at the top of the show, he's been uh, at Worlds before in the international tournament, so he's a guy that we're looking at for definition yeah. focus. Yeah, he was a big part of Rampage last year and this time switching teams up, and I think that's one of the big parts that I'm interested in this match in particular to go back to that Kaboom game that they played against C9. It got smashed Zantin's in the top lane. Yeah, Zantz has had yeah. a rough matchup. And I think, you know, he's not going up against Licorice. I don't think Evie is quite that good. But I love how we're already like, 
He's not going up against licorice, so it's going to be good. Like, hey, for no, NA no fans, matter who that's he goes not up a crazy against, statement. Love it. He's beaten a lot of people in NA. But, I uh, agree, I agree. I think Evie, as a veteran on the team who has the international experience, I hope that they put a little bit more pressure on him to actually go up and, and do a similar game plan this time against Zantan. Mm -hmm. And one of the hardest things for a team when they find themselves in a deficit and a lot of talent across the board for Kaboom is what lanes to actually focus on. I know that uh, previously going into MSI, they played through Zantan's and you actually would play, pick up the Jace, and that's great for them. But if you lack the focus, and that's what happened here for Ranger, sure, top lane was at behind, but then you have to do something in the opposite end, and there was no trading happening on that side. Yeah, we'll have to see what happens in that top lane. I also have my eye on the mid lane, Jinkredo of Kaboom up versus Seros. And now, as a bit of a context, a couple of years ago, Seros was hailed as the faker out of LGL. He's lost some steam in the last couple of years, but I know that you are still very excited about him. I'm excited just because he was the OG Heimerdinger before the rework <laughs> came it? through. Yeah, exactly. That uh, He's played a lot counter pick wise going towards the mages a lot of the time. The Ziggs has been a consistent one, but he's also going up against a guy right in front of you as a deep champion pool himself. Yeah, Chinkato, I prefer him to see him on more of a playmaker than the Victor that we saw uh, the first time around. I mean, he has Swain, Zed, Kale Games. He was playing Zed in the finals of, of their region, you know, and that's the kind of stuff I want to see here. Hopefully something that's a little bit more explosive, a little bit more agency, so he's not just stuck on wave clear duty. Yeah, we get uh, some images there from the stadium where the players are getting ready. I believe they're also being introduced to the crowd right there. Of course, Kaboom is coming back to the stage. They had some time now to think about that loss versus C9 and looked at what they had to change. Uh, outside of Ranger, is there anything else that springs out to you in terms of pick-wise or strategy-wise that Kaboom should be looking at against this team specifically? One thing that I loved was the confidence from Titan. But that being said, you don't want to overblow it. I know that momentum is a big point, but going that far deep, taking two tower shots, doesn't matter if you have Vamp Scepter. That's just, that's going to lose you a few of the laning phase opportunities. In fact, that was the go-ahead for C9 to look to engage. So those are the differences that really lose you opportunities. Well, maybe that's also a, a good point in that Kaboom can also not lose sight of the things they are good at. And that's going to be a difficult one, I think, maneuvering that as the tournament goes on because they love to play outright aggressive in that bottom lane, and we don't want to see them crawl back in their shell, right? So... I want to say one thing. Usually, the te teams that they go up against play their tune. Go as aggressive, so it makes a, the game not as awkward. I feel like this game is going to be awkward for Kaboom. They're going up against a team that's going to be playing a little bit more tame in the bottom lane. All right, let's see. Play game. Players are ready, so okay. can I get your predictions real quick? I've said at the top of the day, uh, you know, I was expecting Kaboom to win this one. I'm going to stick with it. I think they'll bounce back. I okay. may be the flip-flopping guy, but I still think Kaboom's going to take it. I also have Kaboom, so let's see if we are hilariously wrong and if the LGL representative can get their first win on the board. Here's Captain Flowers and Swan. Thank you very much, Shox. Hilariously wrong or decidedly right, the desk is all on the Kaboom side for this one, and we are back for game number three. Yeah, we certainly are. We have seen one of these teams before. I want to hit a little bit more on Detonation Focus Me. They've lost one best of in the regular season for this whole year. It was against Unsold Stuff Gaming. They were taken down by Pentagram 0-3 after having an undefeated split in split number one. That is why we did not see this team at MSI this time around. They were able to come back through the gauntlet, you know, beat USG 3-1. However, the only time we have seen them internationally is Rift Rivals. Don't want to harp on the tournament too much, but they struggled against the Oceanic teams and they excelled versus the Southeast Asian teams. And I think the reason for that is if you fight fire with fire, if you play an early game, Detonation Focus Me are one of the quicker LJL teams and they will try and punish it. Whereas if you play slow, compose, you can win team fights against this team. That's what Oceania did very well. Kaboom going up against Detonation Focus Me here. Lost their first game of the day. Yep. Really want to find the Got win here. Smacked. Starting off 0-2 in a four game system is very rough. Yeah, it means you can only come 2-2. Means that you're at best fishing for a tiebreaker. Yeah, at best you're even. Yep. which is not a situation anybody wants to find themselves in. Remember that Kaboom, the last time we saw them at MSI earlier this year, they went a grand total of four and two. There were more games to play during that group stage, but both those losses were on day one. And that could be indicative that for this team, they have to get their feet wet a little bit, have to adapt to the new situation, new meta, new patch, new everything. But they really need to find their footing here in this one. Bands have already gone through. It's for Khan, Pike, and Aatrox on Detonation Focus Me. Kaboom deciding they want to get rid of the Urgot, the Camille, and that Heimerdinger. No, sir. No, thank you. Not wanting to deal with that one as Detonation Focus Me grabbed the Varus 
for their AD carry. Yeah, a little bit strange coming out of detonation focus me, you know, banning the aggressive supports, given the fact that Riev does have a propensity to play a little bit more of Protect Cheetan. Maybe they don't want some aggression down there in Udapon's lane. They want him to be able to scale up. Udapon, a journeyman of the scene, 2014, first time I saw him at IWCI, has played top lane, has played AD carry for this lineup, and even though they tried to get rid of some aggression, Captain Flowers, I think that we're gonna get some anyway. Well, the Thresh has been picked up for Kaboom, so they want some playmaking capability on that one, as well as the ability to save people if they get in trouble, and the Tristana will be locked in against that Varus. Yeah, interesting matchup, because Tristana obviously scales to have one of the longest attack ranges in the game with that draw or bead passive. However, has a really crappy attack range at the start of the game. Yeah. And I think that, you know, this is one of those lanes that can potentially be punished by something like Avaris, who does have very nice trading patterns at the start of the game. Well, the pickup for the support role on Detonation Focus Me is the Tom Kench to make sure that, hey, Varus is vulnerable. One of the weaknesses of the champion, you've got no mobility, you've got no way to get out. Tom Kench provides that. They're also gonna grab the Kindred there for themselves in the jungle, which will be answered by a Talia jungle from Kaboom. Yeah, and I mean, a little bit more spicy now, a little bit more fire with fire. Kindred, one of Steel's big pickups in the jungler. And you know, Talia going to come through for Ranger, also one of the champions that he likes to play. So this is, a little bit more of what we expected to see. Utility bottom lane coming out for Detonation Focus Me. They're going to be playing around Evi. They're going to be playing around Seros. They like to push waves. They like to evade. And Ranger now does have some tools to keep them out. And in game number one that we saw Kaboom, I complimented their pick and ban because I said I like seeing them adapt to the way Cloud9 plays, banning out the Galio once they saw Blabber on something that was aggressive like the Xin Zhao. This time around, they banned the Heimerdinger in the first round of the bans. They're banning the Ziggs in the second round. Those are the two most played champions on the side of Detonation Focus Me in the mid lane. Taking those out, removing those from the pool, preventing that surprise element. I really like the way they're approaching this. LeBlanc the ban from Detonation as Kaboom will get rid of Gnar as well. Yeah, they're obviously very uh, prepared for what Kazu is going to put together for Dead FM because Camille is certainly Evie's best champion. You'll probably follow that up with something a little bit more aggressive, like the Nar. Already Aatrox was taken off the board by Detonation Focus Me, not willing to first pick that one. So I think that in this pick ban, they very much have squished Evie's champion pool, and we are looking for him to be the primary carry. Sanchez, a rough first game of the day, now not going to be up against one of those tier one aggressive top laners. Yeah, the Nar and the Camille, the two most played picks for Evi, the Heimerdinger and the Ziggs. I already said the two most played picks for Seros. Getting rid of those is very good drafting, in my opinion. You've got the Syndra now locked in on the side of Kaboom. They're going to put Shinkato on that one. Does have more pick potential, more playmaking potential than a Victor who kind of has to have people get stuck in his gravity field. And it looks like Detonation Focus Me are saying, all right, take out our mid laners, two most played champions. We're going to hit you with number three, the Karma locked in. Yeah, interesting that he went for the Karma and not the Zillion, because Zillion is one of Seros's all time most played champions. Historically, was playing that before it was cool as well. However, Karma still does a similar thing, still going to have good priority, still going to be allowing Steel to pressure out Ranger in that jungle position. And they kind of flip the switch. Just go towards a tank top laner in the on. This is not right. something that we're used to seeing out of ZFM. Be interested to see how Evi approaches his matchup. Xantins was thinking about the Darius there for a second. Now going over towards the Scion from tank buster to tank themselves. You can tell they were thinking about that lane matchup saying, oh, Darius got buffed recently. He's pretty strong now. He can really just completely bully tanks. Yep. But at the same time, they don't have much of a front line themselves. They decide to go for the Scion instead. Yeah, they just didn't have an easy way to start up the fight. We saw last game from Edward that if the Thresh isn't on point, isn't all that much of an engaged tool, does have to be relegated more towards Flay's boxes and lanterns. So, you know, hopefully Riev able to play a little bit more further up in this lane, a little bit more aggressive. But Sion just barreling down a lane, you know, potentially as well with Talia cutting off any form of retreat is a much more reliable way to start off a team fight than throwing hooks at people. Yeah, yeah, sometimes the hooks don't always find their mark, but as we're loading into Summoner's Rift, and as you can see the players on your screen right now, I think once again it's important to point out there is an advantage here for Kaboom in the fact that they've already got their first game under their belt. Yep. If you had like the stage jitters or you were just a little bit worried about, oh man, first game of Worlds, oh my gosh, 
that has at least passed a little bit. Ah, uh, see, people say that. Sometimes well, it gets worse. It could get worse, considering the fact that they did get slammed in the first yeah. game. You could have that worry, but it's a different worry now. On the side of Detonation Focus Me, remember, this is this team's first Worlds appearance. For four of these players, this is your first Worlds. Evie came with Rampage in 2017, but for the rest of these guys, it's once again that fishbowl effect. Hey, we're the ones in the bowl, all eyes on us. Step up or go home. Yeah, and a little bit of a different lineup for Evie. You know, he had Dara and Tussle, the two Koreans coming over with him on that Rampage lineup. And those guys were absolute monsters. Remember watching them play against Levi in the Rift Rivals, and they were just able to completely shut down the jungle aggression and allow Evie to do his thing. This game, Evie not going to be on that hard carry, going to be on nope. a tank, going to be a facilitator. So interested to see how Steel, how Utapon, the two carries in the Kindred and the Varus, are able to attack the Kaboom lineup because they need to be able to get this game rolling. As we start things off with a nice sepia tone of a pause, we'll take a brief moment to assess the situation. I'll update you guys whenever we figure out what's going on, see if we get an ETA on when we'll get back into Summoner's Rift. But Detonation Focus Me would love to start things off here with a win today. Again, this is this team's first time showing up on the world stage. Previously, at Worlds at MSI. The LJL has not had the greatest showing, the most convincing of performances during their yep. play-ins appearances, but that was with a different team. Again, as I already said, for four of these players, this is your first Worlds, so this is your chance to say, hey, we're sending the right team this time, and we're here to make a statement. Yeah, absolutely, and I think that, you know, outside of best of fives, this is a team that has been very successful. So in this best of one, they should be very comfortable. They win a lot of their first games. As I said, their overall split record was something ridiculous, like 16-3 split one, and then like 19-2 split two. Like, they just don't drop many maps domestically. They finish the game very quickly. They have a high first blood, high first turret rate. Like, everything you kind of want out of a team, yeah. they have. But you have to stress, is that domestic dominance or is that actually, you know, a world-class team? Because so far, what the LJL region has shown is that it stops at domestic dominance and not exactly. able to translate it into that next step. And that's, at least for me, one of the most fun parts about Worlds, about this massive collision of all these different regions coming together is you get to see who's not just dominant among those teams in their own league but whose style prevails over everyone else as well and for the LJL that's what you want to show off here is the game pause is caused due to a mouse issue they're working on fixing that right now I don't have an ETA yet of exactly how long it's going to take but hopefully it won't be too long Detona detonation focus me and kaboom wanting to get into this game and we talked about the nerves. We talked about the effect of being on a big stage like this, and I've had discussions with players before. Specifically, I talked to Medios about this when he was here earlier this season for some of the analyst desk appearances he did for the North American LCS, and he talked about how these pauses for players can be very jarring. They can take you out of that mental state of focus that you want to be in, and being able to adapt to that as well, just another thing that can separate you from having a good game or a bad game. Yeah, shout out to my co-caster, Ajim. He always said the easiest pauses to go through were the pauses at the start of the game, because all you're saying is, okay, early game plan is this. The hardest pauses, in his opinion, were the extended mid-game pauses, where you're sitting there going, who has flash? What were we doing? Like, how strong am I? I haven't hit someone in a while. Like, how much damage do I do? And you really have to go through the reset process. So I think at the start of the game, these guys are just going to start trying to, you know, stay calm, stay cool, go through some breathing exercises, look to just reiterate as soon as they get out of this pause, okay, you know, Kazu and Hero left us on stage with these game plans to play out the first five minutes, you know. We want to be passive in the Tom Kench lane. On the flip side, the Thresh Tristana lane, probably looking for some money hops at level two, trying to get on <laughs> some top of uh, some people's heads and try and take down this lane. So I think that as long as they stay to that course, as long as they reiterate the game plan, should not be that big of a deal. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are back on the Summoner's Rift. The pause has dissipated. The situation has been fixed, and it looks like we are ready to go here for game three of the day. Detonation focused me and the LJL of Japan going up against Kaboom from the CB Lull. We'll see if Kaboom can finish the day one and one, or if they will start off zero and two. A rough first game against Cloud9 means they're going to need a strong mental game here to just put that one on the back burner. That doesn't matter anymore. That's the past. Time to jump into the present, see what they can do here up against Detonation Focus Me. And it doesn't seem like either team is looking to do anything 
too nutty at level one. Yeah, I mean, that makes a lot of sense. As we keep mentioning, you know, pressure, pause, all of a sudden you don't want to be on the strong. back foot from level one, whilst Cyan as well as Talia have a very good level one. You know, they're just going to play this one out nice and slowly. Want to track Seros's build? Because okay. he's got 280 carry, so you would expect this guy to probably go Athene's into maybe an Ardent Sense or something like that, then a Death Cap to just boost up the shields. As actually, we're going to get a topside invade. We already mentioned the strength of this level one. So potentially going to look for it. Late invade. They want to wait until their opponents have already started the buff and use some skills and then show up. Xantins and Ranger versus Evie and Steel. It's going to be a snipe fight for this. Whoever takes it, it will be big and important, and it's going to be secured by Ranger. Good job there from Xantins, making sure he moves forward. Decimating Smash to keep the enemy jungler away. Yeah, and the big thing there was that Evie didn't want to lose out on experience, so he left very early. Xantins, on the other hand, had access to just be able to walk back up through River. He could stick around for a very long time. Level 2 gang coming in. Ranger saying, all right, let's see if we can find the seismic shove. Saros doing a good job, keeping cool, sidestepping that one, but still ends up eating the scatter of the week. And that means it's time to chug some potions for him. Good early pressure there from Ranger. Yeah, it certainly is. Heal being picked up for Seros. You know, this is a very defensive lane. What I was going to mention on the back end of the itemization talk is that Seros is someone that does generally just build full AP karma at times as well. That's a, that's a very nice Scuttlecraft steal taken by Ranger. Going to deny the mark. That was very close, too. Steel was half a second away from being able to fire off an auto attack that would steal that one. His bottom side. All right, it's not going to turn into much. The lasso from Riev will not turn into a play. They don't want to go in like that. Riev has taken a little bit of damage compared to his opponent, says both junglers now looking for that top side scuttle crab. Steals the one starting things off, but remember, he can't break the armor NMR on the thing. He doesn't have a hard CC to do that, and so this has to be yielded to Kaboom. Yeah, and I was actually wrong. That was the mark that I saw pop up over Ranger, so that's the scuttle crab mark right there. That's going to be taken away as well, so just saw into the future a little bit, but getting double scuttle crab as a kindred, someone that has very good dueling potential, especially when you have a red buff and Ranger does not, just because of your lanes rotating continuously, has to be a frustrating early game for Steel. And you know, we already said on the analyst test that we want to see more for Ranger. Well, I think so far, this has been a very successful early game out of the Talia. Right, going up against Cloud9, we said we were surprised, like, wow, the Olaf's falling behind and farm to the Xin Zhao. He's not exactly finding that early pressure that he wanted. But Ranger's having a great time so far in this game. Of course, we're only four minutes in. We'll see if he can keep that up as time goes on. Bottom side, Chitan versus Yudapon. It was Chitan who did manage to find some aggression in the bottom lane versus Cloud9. It got punished, like they talked about on the desk, eating the turret shots, trying to set up a play that was a dive onto Sneaky after winning the early laning phase. Yep. He did get a lot of free firing time onto the turret now. And I want to see if they can better temper that steel that is this weapon in the bot lane and see if they can find some success with him going up against BFM. As now Ranger once again looking to make the move here in the mid lane. Doesn't get close enough to use the seismic shove to force out a flash, but Seros is very low on man. And Seros is just very aware of the fact that you know he's kindred set behind. There's no control coming out of this jungle situation right now, so he has to play on the back foot. You know, there's no way he can step up to that wave. I also like to adaptation in draft that's come through out of Kaboom, you know. They did have the lane bully lane in game number one. This time around, they at least have some late game insurance. You know, you got yourself that hyper carry in the uh, Tristana, so certainly no pressure to make the early game, you know, the be all and end all. Still have some kill potential, so they can still play aggressive, but you know, there's other ways for Chitan to be able to take over this game. The man on your screen right now, Xantins, remember, he struggled against Licorice. Oh, jumps in. Against Cloud9, but Steel's gonna be in some trouble now. Chitan with that aggro, looking to go in, start this fight off. Can they get themselves away? Ooh. Detonation Focus B now looking to turn this one right back around. Riev gets taken down for first blood. Unipod looking to find even more, maybe now. Chitan trying to get the damage down onto him as Ranger also finds those threaded volleys. Gets himself back over the wall, trying to stay alive now. Steel's in some trouble, gonna be seismic shoved back the other way. And Ranger gets the kill, one for one. That was so close coming out of Steel. You could see, Woo! he could see the double kill right there, but it is not to be back and forward. MVP of that fight was Unipon. He marched into three members and got his man. Teleport's gonna be burnt into this bottom lane. That was so close from Steel. <laughs> My goodness, man. 
Zero sidestepping away from some orbs here in the mid lane. We'll have to get the replay of that one here in just a moment, but these teams have come to party at Worlds 2018. Nobody's willing to sit on the back foot. And once again, you know, this is going to start hurting Seal because Ranger is going to one more time come to his mark. You can see finally he's got Evie coming down to help, so potentially this could be the first mark that they're able to pick up for their jungler, but they're just pressuring him so well at Sam this stage of the game. He's not willing to yield this either. Shinkato's going to take Saros very, very low. Seismic shove comes through. Saros has to flash over the wall, but it's not going to be in time to prevent any damage. And that means further Scuttle Crab area control will be exercised now by Kaboom. Xantex wants to walk up into the brush, make sure they're not going to try to contest this one, steal it away with a cheeky smite. Seismic shove to break the armor. Threaded volley comes through, good by Mr. Crab. Yeah, I mean, you don't have any priority in the mid lane. He's in base right now with no summoner spells. Let's take another look at this one. This is what I meant, that when you're playing the Thresh, you're playing the Tristana, every now and again, you just want to jump on people. Well, Chitana <laughs> took that one a little bit too literally for me. You know, positioning very far away from the rest of the fight. You can see no auto attacks coming through. This is where Varus' superior range was just dominant. He starts marching forward, you know. Everyone else looks like they just want to get out of the fight. Unipon nearly wins this one 1v2. Steel, he saw it. Like, he saw it in his face. He's like, this is the double kill. This is the way back into the game. And unfortunately, that, that's not what actually happened. No, that's not exactly the way he imagined it in his head. But kaboom is now dreaming of red buffs as the second round of the buff rotations come up. It's Ranger in the enemy jungle, stealing that one away, has the smite to make sure he gets it and gets out. Walking right back over his control ward as he exits towards that northern exit. Can really see. surprised he actually didn't protect the Raptor camp there because they have so much priority in bottom in mid lane that, you know, potentially could have looked to continually stick the screws in to Steel right now, who's gone back to Krugs, you know, maybe even expected that that is what happened on the back of these red buff camp being taken away. So really now, they have to start playing around the CC lanes of Evi, of Utapon. You know, Seros set behind, not going to be all that successful, and it is going to be the support karma build coming out. So certainly a hole in the middle of the map for jungle right now that Detonator Focus me need to take into account every time they look to 2v2. Ultimate's coming online here in the bottom lane, as you can see the level six is coming up. Kato taking the damage from that empowered inner flame from the Karma, as it will be the two versus two bottom side. Vivid going to be eating the damage there at the start. Chitan ends up getting caught out by the Chains of Corruption. Health bars injured on the side of Kaboom, but TP is going to be used by both sides. It will be Kaboom getting there first. Santa's looking to find the damage. The cavalry has arrived. Here comes the Ornhorn, still looking to make even more happen. Ranger shows up, seismic shove onto the enemy AD carry. Rehab getting himself back. Santa's also going to be taken low here. Kaboom can't really find anything. Neither can Detonation, and both sides decide to back away. And look how evenly the damage is spread, uh, spread across Kaboom. They kind of just hit whoever was in front of them. Detonation Focus me, not able to pick anything up. But a very nice rotation coming out. You know, you looked like Dead FM was going to be first to that play after the teleports had completed. However, Ranger there with the ultimate. The movement out of Jinketo to come down the river. That's what you want to see at this stage of the game out of Kaboom, and they maintain their gold lead. That gold lead, only 500 though. 10 minutes into the game. This one's seeming pretty close so far between these two squads. Zero's continuing to farm up here in the mid lane with the Karma. Practically even with his lane opponent as it's going to be Scuttlecrab spawning on the top side here again. Ranger says, get the hell out of here, that's my crap. It just feels bad, man, when you're a kindred. You just can't get any marks. Not a single one to his name. 10 minutes into the game. I'm trying to remember what the timer is that you'll want to hit those four stacks. And I asked Irene at one point. Can't quite remember where it is. Let's just go with as fast as possible. As fast as possible would be it's wonderful. Not happening very quickly right But I now. think if you don't have it by about, generally the consensus I believe is around the mid game when you have to start team fighting if you yeah. don't have the range increase for oh. four stacks. Absolutely. It's a big feels bad, man. Yeah, being a melee AD carry isn't fun. <laughs> a melee <laughs> Uh, you know, he's going to have the big shield coming out of Karma, going towards the Athenes, probably going to go towards the Arda. Uh, has some good setup CC and does have a top that is probably going to run into him. So it's maybe not the end of the world at this stage. Right. But uh, it, it's certainly a big bonus to be able to pick up marks. Uh, a lot of Kindred's hit his luck behind that certain mechanic. I mean, the farm is dead even in AD carry and top. It's very close in the mid lane. Yeah, it's a 10 lead for Chinkato, but that's nothing to write home about. 
the jungle is where the biggest farm difference is so far as Ranger, who we were looking at to step up in game number two here for Kaboom, has done just that. Yeah, support's pretty big farm difference. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, we've got to consider Tom Kench is just doing so much work this game, making sure he gets the farm. But I like this run coming out. I mean, we've already mentioned it a little bit, but when you have yourself a Thresh and you have a Talia, you do want to get out of laning phase. You know, you're not going to be punished all that much by a Tom Kench. Sure, a Flash Varus ultimate could be there as well, but that overextends Beautifon at the same time. So I really do think that, you know, splitting up the map at this stage is... It's going to come down to team fight. When you got yourself, you know, a big beefy tank playmaking support on kind of both sides, and then just damage threats from everywhere else, eventually you're going to have to fight. Zeros. Oh, he does get the root down into the inner flame. Nice job there in mid lane. And Detonation Focus Me is a team that normally plays heavily through their jungler. They like to make sure that they Here can set go. up those fights for him. Shitan in some trouble. Flashes away. It's flash for flash in the bottom lane. And Spawn, I would say that favors Kaboom because Tristana has ways to peel for herself. She has ways to get away. But Varus only has Tom Kench. Yeah, I agree. But it depends how they play the lane. Because if they play the lane with Riev out of the lane continuously, that flash is going to be eventually a big deal. Because Shitan's not going to have access to the wave to shove it out. It's going to start hitting the way, uh, turret over and over again. And that can lead to things like a dragon take, which can get this Kindred back into the game. So I agree with you, if it was a team fighting situation, that's more important for Varus. But at this stage of the game, I really do think Chitan needs his class. And at this stage of the game, it's Steel who will likely get himself stack number one. Yeah, Kindred finally grabs herself a stack. 12 and a half minutes into the game. Cloud Drake under the belt of Detonation Focus B also means more rotational capability, more movement speed. Ranger steals away the enemy Grom. Not really a good trade for a Drake, but you get what you can. As here comes your Scion ultimate. Nice job making sure he curves it away there. Decimating Smash also looking to set up the follow-up CC there. The They're going very deep on this when a Kaboom could find themselves very heavily punished. Ornald over the wall setting things up for Steel. Can they find any more here? Santos tries to get himself away. Tom Kench makes his way into the fight now as well. Chinkato trying to fight these guys off here on the top side. But it's Vivid. One more big gobble him up, and he takes him down as Xantons tries to hobble his way out. But Lamb and Wolf together should have the damage. And Steel gets him as well. Tragedy for Kaboom. And that was a 5v3 because they read the play so nicely, and Evie outplays them, holds a flash for the last moment, baits them in. Sure, Kaboom get the first turret, but that should be traded topside. And all of a sudden, Steel is back in this game. And this was a shutout performance by Ranger at the start of it. Kaboom, just they get way too excited to make that play happen. You chase a Scion. Let's take another look through this Acer Predator replay. Yeah, and I mean, this is how it starts. So very nice, you know, three men rotate up. Good layering of CC. But I think as soon as that flick misses, you have to pull out. So you can see Teleport coming in already. They cut off the back line. There's no response coming through. No Teleport channeled by Chitan. They're just trying to cut their losses. And when you have a cop that just has so many globals, so much ability to get around the map, it's very well played. A great read from Detonation. And I think, you know, that's a punish that Kaboom wasn't necessarily expecting. And a punish it is indeed. All the advantage you build up early on in the game will now be neutralized as the gold is dead. Even Kaboom decide, hey, we made a mistake, but that doesn't mean we're going to stop the playmaking train we were going for. They grab the Rift Herald. And we'll see now if Detonation Focus Me decides to take this even game state and make any plays of their own with it. Well, I like that Rift Herald take because, you know, they could have gone top lane, they could have tried to push down the turret. But really, this game is going to be dictated by, you know, being able to push through mid lane turret and start up team fights on your terms. And I think yeah. that, you know, being able to do that uh, is going to be a great boon for Kaboom because we've seen that they can play aggressively. They want to look for the plays. Hasn't always necessarily worked out for them, but. You know, if they're able to build a gold lead through objective, certainly something that is still on the card. And that's normally the plan that this team goes for on the side of Detonation Focus Me. Use early advantages, snowball objectives through them. Now, if you're just looking at kills, you would say, yes, they've got an early advantage. But of course, that's not the entire story of the game. It's Kaboom that managed to grab themselves both first turret and that Rift Herald. So we'll see how that goes for them with that objective control so far. Warrior plus Skirmisher Saber completed for Steel, getting himself back into the game with the kills from those fights. Very, very big, very important for this Kindred. Runic Echoes now also done on the Talia for Ranger. It's, 
it's one of those games, so often in League of Legends, you see junglers being melee champions. There are more ranged junglers than in the past right now, but having Kindred versus Kalia, it's so volatile. Yeah. Because neither one of them is that exceptional if they fall too far behind, but if they get ahead, they're super oppressive. And we'll see if Detonation Focus B can make this mid lane turret happen. Ornhorn gets sounded off. Oh, that Second part, not gonna connect. Detonation Focus B is very far forward. It's gonna be Kindred all dropped immediately. Health bars are gonna be taken very low. The seismic wall comes out. They're making sure they're keeping them back. There comes the team fight. There comes the near white. Detonation Focus Me don't have a snowball's chance. And now they've only got one man standing. It's a one for four. Make it a one for five if they can manage to pick him up here. Saros trying to kite this one out, is gonna be slowed down, and Chitan turns away too early. Saros, if you get away from this one, there's no way. Yeah, there's no way. There's uh, no he's way. gonna go throw a Q at the wave, try and get some CS for himself, check out the scenic route that is the bottom of Summoner's Rift. <laughs> That's the smallest bunny hop of all time, but that, eventually... <laughs> that took so much longer than I thought it would, though. <laughs> That took so much well, longer. Well, I mean, the big thing there is that they don't get any objectives. If you pick up an ace, which is what just happened at 17 minutes into the game, you're expecting a turret off the back end. But once again, Dead FM, they try and use the time catch. They try and cheat tempo. Good read coming out from Kaboom. And aggression is just being punished time and time again in this matchup. That is a, such a nice clear roll. Cuts off Saros' ability to get back out means that they have to run through the choke point. And this looked like a great team fight until they chased Akama from mid lane to bottom lane. Then it looked really sloppy. And everything happened instantly. As soon as Kaboom collapsed, it's just like, bam. It, or, more appropriately, Kaboom. There you go. You punish Detonation Focus Me. Look at the damage in the fight. Compare, all right, if you dare to compare the highest one, 3.1K to 1.8, okay. 2.7 to 1.5, okay. Everybody else on the side of Detonation Focus Me, all right, I guess it got more than fresh, yep. but that's it. That that's was an ugly fight. And uh, I think that, you know, Scion is just so good at capitalizing on those opportunities. Big AOE CC coming in for us. And now that they have this advantage, what I'm looking for them to do is use Talia to sit off the play, wall off the crucial members yep. of the uh, Detonation Focus Me lineup and start allowing Tristana to knock down Taurus. If Chitan gets rolling, if he gets to the Infinity Edge unchecked, this should be a very easy closeout for Kaboom around objectives. And Chitan, remember, this is the young prodigy AD carry from the CB LOL. This is the big guy, the Uzi style player, as he was described earlier for Kaboom. He normally does about 32% of the team's damage. He's a big damage component for them. 3-0 and 2 on a late game hyper carry. Ooh, 19 minutes in, good feels good. really good. As Vivid does a good job keeping Saros alive there, utilizing the Devour, but now it's gonna be Steel, who's in some trouble, is taken very low. Lamps are Spike gonna keep him alive just for a moment longer. Zantan's gonna be in some trouble here, trying to keep himself at least a distraction for the rest of the team. And he's on the front line, will take some damage from that dead body Scion passive. Weaver's wall comes out, Ranger over the wall. Chitan also gonna be fighting the damage now down on what the Zero. Stun. Still looking to turn it right back around. Reset's coming in. Is this what they need? Over the wall goes Vivid, keeping that 80 carry barely alive. Chikato wants to follow, can't quite find the damage. Ranger still wants to chase it. Needs a little bit of damage to do so. Gets the smite just like he was a minion. Vivid's gonna be taken down next. Chinkato grabs that one and kaboom takes out three from Detonation Focus And me. finally, we see the team fighting that Kaboom has really built their season upon, but this time they didn't chase too far. They're going to be able to pick up the objectives, and things are looking very good right now for the Brazilian lineup. Detonation Focus me, they're sticking with it. They are looking to respond in kind, but the item lead is just way too strong. This one starts off with a really nice stun over the wall. Seros, you know, walking the cheat way in. The layering of CC is great. Then just the backline access that Sion has found time and time again means that this fight was always in the favor of Kaboom. Little things like, you know, Evie getting clicked off his ultimate, no CC gonna be there. Summoner spells not available for the mid laner, for the jungler means that they're easy targets to pick off. But really, the start of the fight is what dictated how it was going to go. And Vivid did a good job there trying that was the best job. What else to can you do? Alive? I, yeah, there's not much else you can, but when Talia comes over the wall, rides a rock surfboard up to you, and then smites you, 
there's not much you can do to outplay the point and click of the That is a height. high percentage play from Ranger. That is yeah, what that is. That's right a there. very high there percentage. There is very play. small margin for error. If you get over the wall, you kill it. As long I, as you don't flash I guess you that could, wall. You could accidentally smite a minion or something. Yeah, that, that is true. I don't think there was a minion there, but technically you are correct. <laughs> Either way, <laughs> Ranger is an 8 out of 9 kill participation here on this Talia. Morello Namakon completed now, along with those Runic Echoes, along with the Mercury Treads. The inventory is blue, but the man has red in his eyes, constantly setting up these plays for his team, making everything happen, and has provided an early game that has just been so conducive to the growth of the 80 carry. 4, 0, oh, and 3, two and a half items on Tristana. Damn, that's scary. Yeah, it certainly is, and you know, I measure Talia players by how good they are at combat ulting. Okay. Because it's one thing to be able to, you know, catch someone out with the, uh, Flick off the former CC as actually Titan just dives in. All right, nothing much happening there. But it is another thing to be able to take your moment and look for the wall whilst the fight is happening. It's one more time, they're starting this one up. They sound off the Ornhorn, finding a lot of damage, and that's a big shutdown for Detonation. Yeah, it certainly is. And I mean, one of the things that Detonation has going in their favor is how cheap their item builds are. You know, this isn't a crit AD carry. You're going to go towards a Gwynsu. This isn't a mage that is relying on the Luden's Echo into the Death Cap build eventually. This is just going to be the cheap supportive item. So right now they are also strong. They also have their kit online. And being able to, you know, pick up the big shutdown into the mid lane turret certainly means that they can look to push up waves and maybe contest the Baron. That's the big thing for me too. They got the turret from it. It's yep. not just the pick, it's what did we get from the pick? And removing that, grabbing your first turret of the game, will help to staunch some of that bleeding that you were suffering from the earlier phases. You're still down four and a half thousand to 22 minutes. It's an uphill battle, but being able to find punishes like that is good for this squad from the LJL. Again, their first appearance for four of these players on the world stage, trying to open up here with a win against Kaboom, who are down in the standing zero and one after dropping that first game to Cloud9, but are looking a lot better here in game number two. Santons especially had a very rough game number one. Coming back pretty strong here in the second round. We'll see here if Udipon can go towards that enough to do anything. Doesn't look like it. Blue buff for detonation focus me. Trying to pass that one off to Saros. No interference from Kaboom just yet. Tom Kench fires off the tongue from the shrubbery. And it looks like Kaboom will be just fine. Yeah, and two really nice wards down in the bottom lane now for Dantins. He knows that they're trying to collapse onto him and use the teleport of Udipon to get back towards the Baron play. So he scouts out the two most likely avenues that Udipon is going to look to attack that. Evie does his job, gets the push, backs into the jungle, and he's going to start trying to clear that out. But you can see that at this stage of the game, without a pick, Detonation Focus Me are going to struggle to fight 5v5. Looks like the Ornhorn Horn goes off yet again, and that could be a big pick to the side of Detonation Focus Me. They grab the enemy mid laner and shut down credit over to Udipon. Tied in kills now with the enemy Tristan. That is twice in a row that Udipon has been the beneficiary of the shutdown. In comes the train. Weaver's Wall plus the Scion ulti coming in. This could be the fight. We'll see if they can find anything. Still going to be four versus five. Xantin's in some trouble. Going to be shredded very rapidly. Cheetah grabbing the kill onto Vivid. Rangers alone trying to kite himself away from Evie. Detonation focus me. Still looking to find even more. Evie continues this chase. Manages to tag Ranger with the slow. Udipon chasing after this one. You want to give the money over to the AD oh. carry. You can do it just like that. Udipon Unipon getting those kills. Time and time again, Unipon is the beneficiary of these picks. And whilst they are still behind in gold, building up this Varus, building up once again a late game scaling AD carry means that with the Karma in the mid lane, it's only going to get better for Detonation Focus Me. Kaboom really just need to take that deep breath and reset up around objectives. I'm really liking what we're seeing from Detonation Focus Me. The fact that they can find these picks and set this up is great, but for Kaboom, you've got to be aware. This has happened more than once now. You can't keep giving these up like that. Well, when you see a Tom Kench, you assume 1-3-1 one, one is going to come out because Tom Kench, best support in the game of being able to attack a side lane, you know, be able to pick up a kill with that ultimate. However, in a team fight comp, you're like, what are you going to use it for? Well, they've coupled it very nicely with Evie's ultimate for that long-range engage, just using the slow, in fact, to keep Udipon in range. Now potentially going to look to clear out some vision around this Baron. I've really liked Vivid's game, actually. Yeah. I think that he has performed very well on the flip side. You know, you've got to applaud Ranger. You've got to applaud Zanchin for how they've 
facilitated Chitan's carry potential in setting up these team fights. That carry potential is at a very good point right now, my friend. Infinity Edge, Storm Razor, Rapid Fire Cannon along with the Berserker's Greaves. Across on the other side of the river, you've got the Gensu's Rage Blade, you've got the Blade of the Ruin King, still working on that CL evolution. But both these AD carries are clearly the ones that the games are resting on, yep. the fights are resting on. If a fight starts off and one side loses that AD carry instantly, you have no choice but to return. But on one side, you've got a mid laner trying to provide threat. Hook is on here. On to Ebi, who should be that front liner, but still going to evaporate rather quickly. <laughs> Goes out the shield to get rid of the explosive charge damage. And Maybe kaboom. not the ultimate that Xanchian was looking for there no. as you get head by the wall, but it still will mean Baron is started up here. Still have the ultimate, but that is a very... Oh, he's just going to headbutt it. Headbutt it, Emmy. You can take it down. Weaver's wall trying to keep them away. And they go. The Ornalty comes out. Lamser Spike gets thrown down. It's going to be secured by Detonation. Focus me! And Kaboom gets exploded! Over the wall they go. They're looking to clean up all the kills as well. Ranger having to run away. He couldn't secure it with the smite. Now he's going to lose his life. The collapse is here. And Kaboom has been routed. They certainly have. They've exploded. Another two members are going to go down. ZFM also pushing the mid lane wave. This is a game back on their terms. Detonation focused me from picks into Baron Steels into Aces have clawed their way back into this game and are now barreling down the mid lane. And they are now so far ahead, Flowers. This is going to be a, like a 6,000 gold swing. They're going to take two turrets mid lane. They're going to take net probably an inhibitor. Top lane turrets are also going to be prepared as well as a bottom lane turret falling down. The map has just been decimated. This team has done wonders in this mid game. We talked about Kaboom being an explosive mid game team. Detonation focused me, says hold my beer. And it couldn't happen to one of the better, nicer teams. You know, you don't talk about it a lot, but personality of players are important. Unipon, such a humble guy, has been around with his team for the longest time. Seven, two, and five, putting on a carry performance. But you got to feel for Kaboom, because when you look at this, you're like, okay, we've got out the flash, he's half held. We've got access to the Baron. They can't get in, they can't steal it. They put down Steel's ultimate to try and deny it. That doesn't work, and it is a straight arrow to the knee <laughs> that costs them that tight team fight. And now, that stray arrow to Baron Nasher's knee means you've got a team Baroned up, pushing down the bottom lane. One of our critiques of Kaboom and ways that they've lost games before is isolated death count being very high. And those isolated deaths in the mid game are what allowed mm. Detonation to stall things out this far. Missed ulti from Utapon. That's a pretty big team fight tool not available. The name of the game right now for Kaboom, stall this out. Weather this storm, you still have a Tristana. You still have a player that's one hell of a hyper carry. He goes over the wall, he tries to go in. Weaver's wall comes through. It's not going to separate anyone. Detonation focus beam fall back and oh, be no. But here we go. Turret be damned. They're going ham. Chinkato taken very low. Going to be knocked up into the air like they take him down here. Reev can't get back into the lambs or spite. He's taken down as well. The push continues. It's 5v3. They're knocking on the door to Kaboom's base. They'll knock that sucker right in. It's inhibitor number two under pressure. Going to be taken down very simply, very effectively. Minions are already there from the mid lane as well. On to the Nexus turrets they go. It was rough early game, but Detonation focused me or want to end this one now. Chitan has to jump away. It's and done. that means the second Nexus turret is done as well. Nexus under fire. Detonation focused me. Hell of a comeback. First victory. What a way to kick off Worlds 2018 for Dead Nation Focus Me. They fell behind, but this team with Baron is so decisive, and they took everything off the map. One mistake for Kaboom, and the game is over. What a comeback for the representatives from the LJL. When this game was paused, we were talking about how this is your chance to say, look, we know that Japan hasn't had the performances on the international stage. They would like to in the past couple of big events, but that's because they didn't send us. Now you come here with four players who have never played on the world stage before as this team that is so dominant in their own region and say, here's why we win all of our games. Here's why we have a 90% win rate in both games and sets in the LJL. Detonation focused me. Pulled off. 
and they did it in a way that we haven't seen for a long time. You know, this wasn't Evie's Camille split pushing, accessing team fights. This wasn't even a NAR, you know. This was a full tank on up there in the top lane. This was a little bit more facilitation around Unipon. This was a little bit more facilitation around Steel, who got shut out of the early game by Ranger. So I think that this adds another string to that detonation focus me bow, you know. They yep. can play multiple styles of League of Legends. If you focus one of our players, we are willing to make that adaptation. And I think that that was such a fun game to watch it the really strengths was. of both of these teams and both of these regions. And now Kaboom, 0-2 on the first day. It's what happened at MSI. Yep. Problem is, you only got two games left to play now instead of four. They're going to have to make some adjustments before they come back and play again on day number three. Yeah, and the problem with that game is that they did everything right at the start they of the game. They were so right? far ahead. They were so far ahead. They had the Fed high for carry. They would have thought that that one was all but done. But unfortunately, you know, you blink once in League of Legends, the game back to even real quickly, and it's that is exactly what happens. It's a game of seconds, and it turns out the detonation focused me, found the right plays at the right times. But for more on how they picked up the win, let's get the breakdown from the State Farm Analyst Desk. Well, thank you so much, and I think you were right there saying how we saw so many kills, it was so explosive, and at the end of the day, Detonation Focus Me picks up their first win. Uh, we are going to hear from Saros later on that victory, but I kind of want to say that straight off the bat, it was just kills, 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 kills. I think it was the most active game we've seen so far. It felt really like the beginning of Worlds in a lot of ways. Yeah. Like, uh, so much of Worlds is defined by the big moments, the upsets, and all that stuff, and this game was bloody. There were comebacks. There was, I would argue, an upset. None of us predicted them to win, as True. well as that crazy Baron steal. So, so much happened. This I game. agree. So, let's dive into one of the replays immediately. 12 minutes in, uh, Detonation Focus Me. They take control, Raz, and this is kind of the scrappiness we were talking about and how they've been so dominant in their own region. Because they have a very defensive composition, but I enjoy. You can see them coming through the jungle itself. Ceros and Steel, the TP just behind that. So, while Kaboom wants to dive frequently, this is going to bite them, and mm -hmm. it has multiple people being able to cut them off, just short-sighted from Kaboom. And this was a little concerning because I actually really like the draft that uh, Detonation put together for themselves. It's kind of a double marksman comp with a lot of defensive tools while still having a front line. And once these kills kind of started going over to the key members on their team, I thought they were in a really good spot to kind of go forward in the game. And remember, before this all happens, Kindred is actually getting full denied from Scuttlecrabs entirely. So and honestly, Ranger had a really good game up until that yeah. point. So the, ma the fact that all of those kills now in the pocket of um, uh, detonation focus me disastrous and it just kept piling on. Well, I will say that uh, when we reached that 15 minute mark, it wasn't that bad in terms of gold, but I yes. guess for feeling for Kaboom when you're playing and you see the carries picking up those kills, that's not good. However, as opposed to the first game Kaboom played, they came back in this game uh, for until it, of course, turned bad. But I do want to take a look at how they managed to keep a, a cool head. When they go for the dive detonation focus meet, they managed to turn it around, which was a good resurgence. Yeah, just a really nice flank and wall here, kind of forcing them down to a certain path. The Kindred Alt was used very early on, and so there's no more defensive tools left, despite how many we said detonation had. They get all these kills, and now it's kind of flipped right back the other way. Once again, Chitan able to pick up a, a number of these kills, and. Better but, game. Better game. And it started to feel like they really had control. I think the gold lead got up to around 5K, which is looking really good for them. And the control wards were being placed well around the Baron's mm -hmm. side as well. So the fact that Talia was able to get the walls down, really holding the enemy team in, I thought that was really job well done. And it was leading up to that Baron point. It was. And this is where we get to kind of the most important part uh, of the replays and also the MasterCard player of the game. Yutapan, we already oh, thought baby. he was doing well. But the fact that he steals the Baron with Varus really tipped it over the edge for us. Good setup, though, from Kaboom. Oh, God. This was a nice idea. The Tleo Hall and their DPS is just a little lower than they thought. Oh, they're going to get oh. in range. But uh, the Varus W. Combo, I'm pretty sure, was what gave him the damage finish drop, but it got down to like 44, it looked like. Do you think if uh, Kaboom secures this, they win the game? Yeah, easy. I, I, I do. The, even though this game has actually been fairly messy, so you, can, you can't just count out the defensive nature of the composition that Nation Focus Me has, but that, that they've been playing towards that the entire time. They can just go for a 1 3 1. I, that's what I would have liked. Mm -hmm. But the fact that that goes completely over, and remember, we've been hyping up the 
the Karma Train, Arden Sensor, Athena's Unholy Grail yeah. with 280 carries by her side. All she needed was that timing, waves to be rolling through, and I think they were able to get that. Beautiful moment for you, Tafani. It was probably like, yeah, guys, I just did nice. that. And they finished the game so cleanly off that. Um, now let's look at what the group looks like after a couple of games we've seen. I do want to call up a tweet by Vettius, and I got to be honest. All right, let's go. What I is he wanted, saying? I wanted to kind of call him out, but he may be right. Detonation Focus Me will get out of this group. Save this tweet. What's funny is you were trying to flip-flop <laughs> off camera about your prediction because you said kaboom and then wanted to go back. No, no. Yeah, wait. Okay, so... <laughs> <laughs> wait a second. I, I had kaboom and then I have it on our... I chatted yeah, with yeah, my producer yeah. and I said I want to change it to Detonation Focus Me and then I flip-flopped on air. I don't know. This is impossible to predict. I just know that Detonation Focus Me looks strong. And I'll say this. Feel-good moment for Vettius, by the way. For years, every IWCI... He I says just Japan, Japan, Japan. Every Japan, time. Japan, Japan. I know a guy watches a lot of anime, but we finally get down to it. Real analytical com point coming through. He has faith that Detonate Focus Me comes through. That being said, we need to see something at a day two. Yeah, I agree. And well, oh, I was going to say there? the same thing. Just like this isn't, they're not out of the woods yet because this game was on a knife's edge and they could very uh, easily have lost this game. So they need to make sure they clean things up a little bit to actually make it out of the game. I agree. And also, of course, for Kaboom, they now start 0 2. This is a team that's going to have to fight to come back in the next couple of days. So that means this group is going to become super interesting. It is already. I've been talking a lot. I literally need a breather so let's take a break uh, when we return it'll be g-rex versus chaos latin gamers you won't want to miss it <laughs> right there right there right there can they get themselves away? That nation focus me. Now looking to turn this one right back around. Riev gets taken down for first blood. Chief Kato trying to fight these guys off here on the top side, but it's vivid. One more big gobble up, and he takes him down. And Santens tries to hobble his way out, but Lamb and Wolf together should have the damage. The seismic wall comes out. They're making sure they're keeping him back. There comes the team fight. There comes the near white. Detonation focus me, don't have a snowball's chance. Weaver's wall trying to keep them away. And they go, the Orn ulti comes out. Lambs are spike gets thrown down. It's gonna be secured by Detonation Focus Me! And Kaboom gets exploded! Nexus under fire! Detonation Focus Me! Hell of a comeback! First victory!